I should not say that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're still in session. Thank you. All right. So um, we did our our meeting the TSP with the City Council. Now we're going to continue um, to the cons consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any comments? Um, I move that we approve the consent agenda for July 18th minutes. I'll second, second that. Oh, you go ahead. It's been per moved and US. seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Motion passes. Now, um, the next thing on the agenda is a public hearing, which has been canceled. Um, does anybody know why why the applicant pulled that? Um, I'm sorry, I I don't. It's my understanding it had to do. The applicant is the one that asked for it to be canceled. I do not know if it will be continued. I I haven't been privy to that information. Okay. And then um, we have item number three, which is discussion of civic design standards. And uh, Malachi put together some stuff very well Thank prepared you. and uh, easy to read, and it looks great. So why don't you go ahead and just talk about that? Sure. So a little background on this is, you know, we've got... Um, We've got the standards in place for residential. We've got standards in place for commercial. What we don't have in place is anything for the civic municipal buildings. And every time we go and we ask a developer, hey, you know, we'd really like you to do this thing or that thing, we really have no leg to stand on because we're not doing it ourselves. And so I thought one of the things while we're waiting for the ability to work on grants uh, that we could do in the short term is maybe start working on some civic design standards that um, that we could put in place so we could basically be the role model and that we're not asking developers to do things we're unwilling to do ourselves. Um, so I wrote this up quickly. I mean, it's just something to get the ball rolling for the discussion um, uh, to kind of give some ideas for kinds of things we might do, like directions we might take. Uh, but again, this is just for the discussion. Um, I would imagine that we as a group would take some time to actually develop some actual code standards. Just I wanted to give us some ideas on what we might do. Um, I also had talked to Jackie um, regarding the grants. They are working on putting a process in place to, to ask for the grants and go through that process. She has asked that we not request any grants until that process is in place. Um, it was supposed to be on August 8th, but it's been postponed, I think, until next month? September 12th. Yeah. Um, so right now, this is not involving any of the T, uh, the T, T whatever those grants were that we were talking about before. We're not talking about doing any of that. Yeah. This is just talking about us doing some stuff on our own, like we did with the transportation, uh, like the telecommunication stuff, where we just work through a small section on our own. Uh, I thought it was a uh, kind of opportune time, since we have some of these civic buildings coming, Maybe we can stop them from making like a 1970s box with windows like they tried to do last time. So with that being said, I think what I'd like to do is just kind of skim through it really quick to kind of talk about what these different things are. Yeah. We don't need to read word for word or anything. Um, I put these into a couple different goals. I think that we might rework what those goals are. Um, for the first one, uh, the reducing energy footprint, uh, about a year ago, Tammy and I were looking at the PGE costs that we have, and they were pretty high. And she was talking to me about what could we do to reduce how much we're paying PGE. Um, and so we started talking about different technologies that are out there that we're not taking advantage of. So uh, this first one on here, you see four different houses here. These are all built with Tesla solar roof. I don't think any code that we do can recommend any specific company. I think we can recommend technologies, but we cannot encourage or recommend a specific company. I'm only putting these here as illustrative that they're no longer, they no longer have to be ugly. I mean, these roofs actually look quite nice for being solar. These are fully solar roofs there. Um, on the next page, um, the battery backup. So we already put this as a requirement for Verizon when they did their tower the first time. Um, that instead of doing these huge diesel generators, that uh, we would require battery backups. Um, these are becoming uh, more and more common for municipalities to do. 
It helps them uh, keep their, their own networks up when the power goes out. Um, and in this case, um, I think it could also help the city um, do a little bit better for disaster recovery type stuff too maybe. Um, but so one, one of the things here is that um, I made a note here that I haven't talked to PGE about one of the assumptions I have here about the power grid coming back on. But in the last week, I had my power go out 10 times here in the city. <coughs> and I, had I posted on next door and had multiple other people say their power was going out all over the city as well. So anything that I think we do that would help improve that situation is probably a good thing. I don't have it verified with pg e that this would help, but that was one thing I was thinking about. Well, I think about. it will. You know, UPS and the battery backup in the UPS are similar in, in a lot of ways. And like where I work, we have certain things are on the building UPS, and when the lights blink, you don't know because you're actually running off of that and not the direct power. And the direct power just feeds the batteries for the UPS. Yeah. So I think, you know, definitely that's, that would help for sure. You're also controlling spikes with that technology. Right, that right. High-tech customers, and they get far beyond my knowledge, but we all know that especially when you get the weather we have, that you're going to have lightning, you're going to have issues. Um, I'm surprised where I live, Little Rock Glen Echo, I don't get that many power outages, but right, you know how the city is, it's a hodgepodge, and you get down the road, everybody's power's out, it's coming and going, you know, mm -hmm. and you're looking, and, and if you ever see a power outage in Gladstone, you start looking around and seeing what's lit and what isn't, it's a telltale. Yeah. It's very telltale. It's right. a cluster. The <laughs> most recent one was the transformer at the high school. Yeah. So when it comes to doing this, I, I'm I'm real big on it. I also believe that, you know, we've got a standard for a police station for homeland security. I don't think that 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 a city hall has to meet that, but I believe the closer you are to it, the better, because in a disaster, people are going to go to the city hall. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're just going to congregate there. Sure. And Police station and, and, it, and if it's a civil defense facility or whatever the correct term is these days, um, if it's, for lack of a better description, if it's not happening, this whole city's in big trouble. So I, I see this as, you know, the, the energy aspects of it as being really viable. And obviously, as you said, Malachi, we're a long ways away from a building. We don't know if we have a flat roof. We don't know what we have. But at least getting some good recommendations and getting some momentum there and I would couch that by saying without overkilling it yeah. without you know saying that we have to ha everything has to be plated right. in gold um, I, I certainly support this and want to thank you for your effort <coughs> yeah. have you actually had a conversation with PGE I haven't yet I actually made a comment about that because I know for resident I can't speak on commercial buildings but I'm assuming that they offer the same incentives and benefits because if you really try because I was looking at some alternative forms of um, heating sources for my house, and they have a plethora of programs. Mm -hmm. And the more they can convert to solar and wind and all the newer technologies, <coughs> my best friend's father decided to do that and have his whole roof make, they let, he let PGE put solar panels on it. He doesn't pay any electricity. In fact, he sells the rest of it back that it generates because he lives right near the gorge, yeah. and he gets a lot of sun and a lot of wind. Yeah, the net metering is something that um, I, I think my current house is set up for, but I'm not generating anything. So. Yeah, but no, he actually gets money back from PGE. So I'm all for being and sustainable. I would I add that I spent it. many years in heating and cooling, and uh, when we started doing in-ground heat pumps, it seemed like some unaffordable, bizarre thing that you never pay back. Hmm. Yeah. Of course, then I went to some of the, the homes people were building where you know, it's it's not just the the size of the home or the building; it's the it's the cubic feet of air that you're conditioning. Mm -hmm. So when you've got a nice nice foyer and gables and high ceilings, it makes for a wonderful home. No matter how efficient the system is, you're still moving and conditioning more air. So we're talking about comfort, we're talking about efficiency, and we're talking about a hedge against you know future trouble. Rates are going to go up somewhere somehow, you know, and. So Good job. we really got to think down the road. Um, I like that, especially for our civic buildings, because what if we lose power? Could these people in 1947 imagine we'd be here today in this building with all of this technology and all the holes we got in the roof and somehow still making it work? 
you know, you go to a, an older motel and there's like two plugs on the wall. Unless you bring your adapter, you can't run your laptop, you know. So we don't want to build a building, and I know we won't build any buildings that 20 years down the road they're outdated. Yeah. But where are you when you get to that 30-year, 30 35-year point where we start saying, oh, well, now we got to do a major remodel, so how are we going to go 30 years or so and, and have something that's not going to nickel and dime us to death? Because 30 years from now, you're still going to be working here. <laughs> Obviously, you don't know how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll let you out of here in maybe 20. Oh, maybe thank 20. you. <laughs> Thanks, I'll get sure. carded. So sure. no. <laughs> in doing this, are, are we going to be looking at, oh, okay, say for instance, they're going to build the new police station. How are they going to heat and cool that? I mean, are they going to go standard, you know, gas or are they going to look at geothermal and well they'll have to have gas in the building and typically you, you probably would use that as your starting point especially if you've got a roof system we're getting into the weeds a little bit but right. yeah. but it but it also can be tailored where the main system doesn't necessarily cover the entire building because you've got a couple of little small heat pumps or you do some things to you know with heat regenerate or with you know, moving air out of the attic. There's a lot of neat things that you can do, but um, again, you got to wait. You got to factor what's practical, what's affordable, where's our best payback, and not start chasing shiny objects. Yeah. 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 So, Malachi, how do you see um, some imp implementation of this? I mean, how would you like to see this process? As it um, so, you know, like I said, I. I, I laid this out as a, a way for us to start the conversation. I think the correct thing for us to do would be to work through what we feel would be uh, worthwhile uh, recommendations. We would need to work with David, <coughs> like we did with any code, uh, to figure out what the actual code amendments would be to do that. Um, then we'd have to present those to city council for them to actually prove. I believe, I don't know if the well, we hearing process to, uh, would probably be 2017 for city standards, right? Yeah. I think we have, so to, we have to do, do the whole public seven, hearings yeah. and do all that kind of stuff. So it's not, you know, anything right. that can not happen short -term. really quickly. So I, I think when you put this together, you're thinking about the new civic building. And yeah, and, and, and I, I, I don't did know if we'd that. ever be able to get done in time to to actually be able to. Yeah, I did mention that to Tammy. And she felt that because they're doing a progressive design, that if we work on getting these in and we get them into the code, they will still be required to follow that, depending on how far along in the process they are when they go into effect. Could we not? Could we not require certain things in our? You know, obviously, I understand how it works. We're asking them to design a building, and we've already given them some criteria. But even if we don't have these things officially approved, if there's a consensus with the council and the, so that's the, the community, yeah. As, yeah. Um, we may be just able to make it happen, even though we don't have it specifically in our code, because there's one thing to get cooperation. Yeah. Uh, I think we another need thing to say, well, this is what we have to have, or this is what we're required to do. Yeah. If, if we can get there, even if it's not required. I think we'd have to be a little bit further along and have to show that we're actually serious about it. Um, right. but, I, but I think we could. Um, I do. I, I mean, do. you've used uh, upcoming standards and plans in the process. So what I see this falling into is real similar to you can always go more stringent. And I mean, this, this, this company building, this is going to be working for the city, right? Yeah. So if we're going to do something over and beyond what the code says, I don't think there's any reason why you can't do that. Yeah. So doing solar, I mean, unless we say you can't have solar, <laughs> right, we can right, put yeah. solar on it. So, yeah. are yeah. we aware of any federal upcoming mandates that will be coming that will require certain civic buildings to use more sustainable energy? And not if so, we might be more progressive I by mean, saying not to say anything political, but with our current e uh, political climate, I wouldn't expect that. Okay. I mean, a lot of a lot of the federal. Pardon? Be lucky to hold on to what you've got. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the federal stuff right now is being withdrawn rather than pushed. Okay. Right, but I, I know I wasn't involved in it heavily, but when I was over at City West Lynn, they built the police station over there. Right. And they did a whole bunch, got a whole bunch of credits for um, different yes. things. You know, just a <coughs> plethora of stuff, lighting, parking, the way they did parking, and just that building, everything. That building is And I'm, I'm sure we're going to bring on an architect or somebody that's going to help us with that, and it's in tune with what's current. 
but yeah. You know, and, and one thing we have to keep in mind too, so when we start looking at it going from this to actual code, there are some changes that might happen because of that. Like, for example, in our code, we say that a building has to be positioned on the lot in a very specific way because of the way the sunlight is. But is that the perfect way for solar? Probably not. No. Um, in which case, like, we may uh, provide exemptions for that part of the layout if they're doing the solar roofs, yeah. right? Because we would want to optimize for solar rather than, you know, for a wind going through the front door or whatever. Right. Right. And we need to, anybody that's making recommendations or suggestions has got to really know our codes because you can look at something that says it's recommended that you have south facing for solar and then someone says, oh, well, we're required to have south facing for solar. So the words we're using and the minutia can get pretty deep. So whenever we talk or do mm -hmm. anything, you know, we've got to make sure that everybody, we know what we're talking about, but w what does the council and what is what are the citizens, now what are they doing down there this time, right? Yeah. So they need to know that, uh, you know, what things mean so that we don't get a lot of confusion or, you know, as much as, as I'm, I've been involved in so many things as a citizen, you heard me earlier to say that, you know, I'm big on it, but it's also a double-edged sword because you open a candy store, you bring everyone in and everybody wants all the candy and we don't have enough money. Yeah. So there's that fine line where we need to make recommendations and suggestions that not only make sense and that, that citizens would, would obviously support, but that are affordable and achievable rather than just a, a wish list for it, as we've said at Taj Mahal. Yeah. And if anyone wins that, that, that $700 million jackpot, they are required to donate a million dollars to the Gladstone Library. <laughs> um, is there any way as a city that um, we could implement incentives that would encourage, I mean, this is for civic buildings, but for anyone that wanted to do something more commercial, that, you know, it would be a great incentive if they were to choose these sources. Yeah, and, and that was one of the things I said earlier about how I feel like we kind of have to, like, lead the charge because we can't really ask developers to do things we're not willing to do. Right. Mm -hmm. But if we are doing it, and if we can point to our own buildings and say we're doing it, then it's easier to encourage that. Exactly. And it's also easier to say, developer, I don't agree with you when you say it's not possible. We're doing it. Right. Right. But I, I do think that some of these things would benefit the city as a whole oh, if the definitely. developers were to do them. But I don't think we're in a position to ask the developers to do them right now. How do we get there? I, I think we need to show that it can be done okay. ourselves before we go and start asking developers to do it. Because, you know, some of these things they're going to just think are worthless to them because it's cost them more money, right? They're not going to get as much money out of their, out of their, their uh, purchase, right? But, you know, some of this stuff uh, is not, you know, some of it's like landscaping, right? Um, some of it is, has to do with the buses. Some of the stuff is addressed by the TSP right now. Mm -hmm. um, so some of this isn't all that out there. Yeah. No. But, like right now, parking and landscaping are the two things developers complain about the most. And 90% of the time, they tell us that they cannot do it because of Metro, they cannot do it because of our code. If we can show that it can be done, those arguments go away. And do we need to modify certain codes that will make it easier as well? Like I you were talking about parking and landscaping. Yeah, and so, so we're so not too restrictive. So, well, like this, this thing I did a picture of here, this uh, yeah, I saw that. city tree thing. This is the equivalent of 275 urban trees, right? That could easily be done um, similar to like how we currently do um, some of the fencing requirements, right? Mm -hmm. And provide a lot more green um, kickback, right, than what currently we require developers. I'm not saying, and like I said, I don't think we should ever requ require any specific company or brand or anything like that. I'm just saying there, there are things out there the developers just aren't aware. Yeah. And once yeah. we can start showing that it can be done, once we have ourselves up to the same standard, I think it's easier to put those standards on the developers. One of the things I did notice in the TSP tonight was they were talking about the, the TriMet. And, um, you know, I did talk about TriMet a little bit. And one of the things that I think will help us also is, you know, we need to define the difference between a building and a municipal complex. 
Public Works is a great example. They have a lot of buildings in the same parcel. Okay. Right. They're not a building, right? And if you have requirements per building, um, things like Public Works be might become onerous, right? A police and fire station, if they're together, that's, that's one destination, right? Um, and so I think that's one thing we can do is we can start defining some things that happen like at a municipal complex that may be different than something that happens at a specific building, you know, and I, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but I think public works is probably going to be the most right. separated as far as buildings goes, right? Right, right. And then, you know, they talk about hardened structures and stuff and being able to deal with national disasters and stuff like that, and I don't know how like battery backup would be versus a generator. You know, like this last winter we had, um, we were out over a day, you know, running off a generator. So I don't know what the life is of a battery backup, but maybe it's a two-part system or something well, like part, that. So your generator feeds that. So oh. so it feeds into that. Right. So okay. your generator charges a battery that you run off of, basically okay. is how it works. Like a car in a way. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, and, and it really does depend on what you're getting. I mean, mm -hmm. they have um, entire power plants using them now. Um, right. I don't recommend us doing that. Right. Right. Um, you know, we we have to think within the scope of what's reasonable for us. Right. Right. And and a perfect example, as you all know, the cost of heating is is when you're when you're you know creating heat, you're using the most energy. Well, if you have a really efficient building, you've got the right solar and now the power's out, you're not in the same boat as somebody that has got a 1970s box of windows or a place like this, something that, that, you can't that is going to cost yeah. so much more just to, even if the building is vacant, you've got to keep the heat on, and here you are in the middle of winter or whatever, you're mm -hmm. in a crisis, and so there, you're going to find that we may find ourselves with a generator, but... Um, the, the generator battery system, as you described, is, would still be the best way to go. Right. And uh, and you'd also have, you know, you think about worst case scenario. You you, you go a day with without fuel, you run into a real pinch, and the battery's only going to keep you going for eight hours. That's better than the generator running out of gas, and you don't even have any lead time. You got nothing. Generators are wonderful until they run out of fuel. Especially right. around here, unless we have a disaster, we're not going to be in trouble. But when do you need the generator? Oh, when you when you have a disaster. So. Right. And usually you carry three days of fuel on on hand, typically. Two but, hours. Um, yeah. Well, I, you know, and and on top of that, you know, if we do have some things like the solar on the roofs, mm -hmm. even if we ran out of fuel, we'd be getting some right. some uh, emergency There's electricity. It wouldn't be enough to do right. everything we want to do. But it might be enough to run the emergency system. Right. Right. And usually diesel versus natural gas or like we have propane. We were actually thinking we were going to run out and you can't just get, when all that ice and snow, yeah, you can't, can't get, get a propane truck down or it's like, yeah, put the propane in. Natural gas <laughs> is the best way to go because it's an unlimited supply. It never stops. It's an unlimited supply, but it's a utility that can go out. We had a lot of those over at some of our pump stations in, in West Linn, and we had issues with those. And really? during the dead of winter, there were actually some supply issues as well, not necessarily a severed line, but diesel is the one thing you can always get. It's the most reliable. When you have a national disaster, that's the fuel that they bring in. You have you to know. get there, though, to get <coughs> it. Right. Right. But we we have tanks. We can actually go get it. Yeah. So that's yeah. the, I guess in my opinion, I think diesel is the best backup, and you can have a tank, and we would pump out of it for our daily use so it would get turnover. So we'd that's have, have on-site, you know, we don't have it now, so we've got to drive our backhoes down to the gas station or <laughs> go down there and transport. So we used to have tanks down there, and they got rid of them, but you would... You know, thinking about this whole package, you would really, I mean, PD, us, we can all use on-site fuel. And so that would help augment that supply as well. So that's that's my experience with backup generators, which we had all, pretty much all of our sites over there, and it, that's the, the route we went. Correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, but I vaguely remember when we went and toured the police station over in West Lynn, they had a diesel generator, but then they also had it hooked up to solar as a secondary backup. So they had solar on the roof and that's for like continuous use, but the generator, obviously the generator would pick up where the power went off, but you'd still be running your solar as much as you had energy coming into them, so your generator would just 
run at less of a load and okay. last longer type. Of so system. I was so remembering that correctly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That they was did. I, I can't. That was a good system. Yeah, I I can't even remember the list of things they did. They did tons of things. I mean, to the point of putting hybrid car parking up front. Mm -hmm. I mean, and all this, all your rain drains went into all these, you know, I think that swells, and I mean, it was the building went through. They did it all. They they checked all the boxes and got all the. I hope our police station right. somewhat similar. Yeah, yeah. and there's it was there was incentives. It wasn't like it cost. Mm -hmm. There's incentives to do that. It is such yeah. an efficient yeah. facility that I was so impressed yeah. it left me speechless. It was yeah. so well. good job, Malachi. And Thanks, Malachi. Good work. Uh, you don't need to get into this a little bit. So, in the interest of time. Um, do we want to discuss this further, or do you want to move on? And um, why don't we why don't we just decide what the next step plan would be and call it a night? Okay. Hi. And then we still have um, on the agenda. Or uh, I want to make a little speech about a couple things okay. at the end Comments. on business from the commission. And uh, it would be a good idea. I don't necessarily need to make a motion, but let's look at getting this on as a, an item, certainly for our next month's meeting. I'm sure you're probably kind of assuming that, but I just want to just give, yeah, just give it a, let's keep the conversation going. And and if you find things or we find things, you know, let's just share them, share them with, with uh, Jim, our public works director. And, and just as we're doing with TSP or anything else, keep, keep, things going otherwise they kind of fall by the wayside and then all of a sudden we hear about it and now we got to kind of rush to get our involvement or our response um, and this is something that we can just be working on in the background all the time. Are you, are you wanting this information included again next month and then if there's anything that you're wanting to have in addition we need it the week before your meeting to include in the packet. Right and more than anything if we get a chance to just to have a discussion and some ideas about what we have already here and what we've already talked about to just start moving the, the ball down the field to where we're going to get to a point where we're going to make some more recommendations and then have something to share with the community and the council and staff. Yeah, I think we need to figure the process that we're going right. to use, you know, and kind of discuss that about you know, our, we're going to be making some legislative uh, things and what that all entails, so and et cetera. So oh, maybe, yeah. Jim, um, if you wouldn't mind, before the next meeting, maybe you could take a look at that and um, add some feedback to it for okay. the next meeting. I'll do my yeah. best. I got a, uh, I got a pretty busy plate the next month. <laughs> you, have you I seen the council agenda? <laughs> yeah, it's right going to have to pack a lunch. Pull it up. <laughs> I do have a question for you. Yes. I toured the police station, but who at West Lynn, City of West Lynn, would be the appropriate individual to maybe get a list of some of the incentives that they implemented? If you can yes. give a name, I'll be more than happy to contact them. With yes, the, the police oh. chief, and I'm trying to remember his name right offhand, um, t t t Tim Ramius. I think. Tim Ramius? But, yeah, I think that I might be wrong on the first name, but Ramius. They have a building manager there in West Wind, right? Yeah. They have a new one. The old one just retired, so oh. they have a new one, so I don't know how familiar he is with it, and that, that's just happened in the last year. Tim uh, Ramius is a city attorney. Tim Tim Ramos. Oh, is yeah, you I think you're right. He's the city attorney, Tim Ramos. Yeah. Please, you, you probably look on there. I think you can find it. It's I'd love to get a copy yeah. of mm -hmm. sure. some and of the he was that they chose because it, yeah. it, it's such an efficiently designed. Well, as long as he's still there. But whoever that police chief was, I thought it was Tim Ramos, but um, whoever it is. He went, he he's the one that worked that project, so he would know. It wasn't Public Works that did that. They They kind of ran it themselves. Yeah. Awesome. And I didn't get all the criteria, but you know, it was like they, the person who gave us the tour, pointed out certain things, including the features above the windows that directed the direct sunlight mm -hmm. more into the building. I mean, it was just a, every a lot everything. of stuff. And then they might even be able to tell you, uh, maybe don't do that one because it's, or, you know, because they've been okay, in it a while go. now. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. That's Terry Timius. There we go. Close. A little bit of a rhyme there. <laughs> so he was there. He's the same one. He was very heavily involved in that project. Now, um, would anyone mind if I contacted them directly, or would you prefer to do it, Randy? No, go ahead. Um, I want you to send an email to Tammy. 
That's in her first. And then Tammy will decide, you know, how to escalate that. And that's kind of, you know, what I want to talk about a little bit about how we should be conducting ourselves as far as... You're talking about Mayor Stemple, correct? No. Tammy, Tammy. Okay. So let's start, you know, we got to come up with, with something. And the city's got a new policy on communications and stuff like that. So we have to think about this a little bit before we... You know, you don't want to send an email to the city attorney that's going to start racking up fees and stuff. Let's go ahead, and then when it's my turn, I'll talk about a little bit. Real quickly, it's not going to be very long. <clears throat> so, do we have other... Are we done with that one? Do we have business from the commission? Uh, I asked the chair a question before the meeting started, and I don't know that it would go anywhere, but... Uh, I've seen two projects in the city that have just ground to a complete halt. Uh, the old uh, elections building down on the corner of Gloucester has been half-sided for months. A and then year. the duplex that isn't a duplex, as uh, Randy calls it, isn't on Gloucester also <coughs> has been sitting there. Uh, it looks like it's been abandoned. I haven't seen anybody around it in two been or three installed, months. installed, yeah. So from our position, is, is that something we should be involved in when uh, when plans are assessed in terms of should there be any kind of a, a completion date on these things yeah, the once they're started? Specifically, I think the question was, is there a time limit on construction? I don't think there is. I don't, I don't know. That'd be a question I'd have to follow up and get an answer to. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have a time limit on a substantial amount of work being done? Right, and permitted work, of course. But if you're remodeling, like the old elections building was purchased by a contractor, and of course contractors are busy so they're trying to work on their building and and their people are out in the field so I can't speak for them but in the meantime it drags on well if if what they're doing there to that elections building really doesn't meet the bar that you're mentioning then no and it's kind of a double-edged sword because we can say gee it's not getting done and that's different from a building that's ripped apart, no windows in it. But here we can say the elections building is undone. Gee, come on, get it done. Or we can step back and say, quite frankly, that election building looked like an abandoned old box and sat there with no attention for years. So it, I hear what you're saying, and at the same time, you know, when you're the one that owns the building and you're making an investment and you're upgrading it, you start feeling like, well, what next? Or, gee, you know, I'm going to get it done as soon as I can, and here people are giving me a bad time about it. And I know that's not where you're coming from, but... Um, well, I think we just need to know what, you know, what, if any rules, and that might be something that, you know, we need to look in the code and see if there's anything in there or ask David or somebody. And Clay should know if yeah. they have permits and when they would expire. Yeah, and I think that would fall under the building permit right. area. And so ever how long a building permit, and I know they can ask for extensions. I don't know all those details because that's all done over at the county, but Clay might be the right Yeah, that might be the best. And, the, and there's, yeah. there's a minor and then there's a major mm -hmm. remodel. So yeah. the time Well, frame. in the case of that duplex, it's not a duplex. Yeah. It's all, right you know, here. it's up it's, and there's plywood on the outside. I, I'm was the roof on there? Was it dry? But anyway, there was substantial, you know, it's substantially, you can tell what, is it, what it is, right? But, but what who knows be. what happens. I've run out of money before when I was doing projects, so. And that, and that one looks like if, uh, you know, all of a sudden winter's going to come and it's, we're going to have a tar paper so shack sitting there. So I think the answer to your question is we'll ask Clay. Right. But the second half of that question is per whatever Randy's about to tell us. Right. <laughs> what the procedure is, yeah. Well, I'm not going to tell you. We're going to have a discussion about sure. um, social media and PIO and stuff like that just real quickly and then maybe put an agenda item on the next planning commission meeting to have, you know, someone from the city explain exactly what the social media policy is and um, how to route certain things when we have questions, et cetera. And that's essentially what I wanted to talk about, um, how to address, you know, anything that we as a commission or, but we want to send, like, say, if I have a question, I'm going to send my question to Tammy because she's our direct person on staff that we work with. 
and if it has to do with Jim or or anybody else, then she'll know what that is, and we won't have a quorum or a public meeting as you know me copying all of you on that or whatever. Some comment I might have or a question for the attorney, I would just send that to you. Perfect. And say this is my question, and we've done some of that back and <laughs> forth stuff already. So I think there might be a caveat there. So okay, for me adding this thing to the agenda. Jackie had asked me to send it to you instead. And well, you I, I think you could send a, a question to me about specific things on you know the agenda, but if you have a question about, like, you know, for instance, this technical thing with the building uh, yeah. permits or whatever, I think, you know, you could send it to me or you could send it to Tammy. It's not an agenda item. It's not anything we're having a public hearing about. Um, how does that sound? I mean, we can change it. Oh, we just can, my we can send it to both of you, for that matter. You could send it to me and Tammy both. Yeah. But I don't want Jackie to get a bunch of stuff from us directly, okay. or Jim, or, you know, I think we need to route it one way. Makes sense. In the past, I have contact, a couple of times contacted Jackie Betts directly. The, yeah. other, the other advantage is pretty simple, is that if it's all going in the same funnel, it's all going out, and we know who our contact person so, is, yeah. and we have a question. We're not calling Jim or bugging Randy or anything else. We know that that you know the information is going through. And then I get to bug him. So <laughs> with, with Jackie, I trust that will happen. I will say, though, that with Eric, it did not. Um, we were required to send stuff through Eric, and then he didn't forward it. And then months later, I was asking if they got it yet, and they still hadn't got it yet. He and that happened repeatedly. So he is correct. That was mm -hmm. one of the concerns we had when the idea of funneling information through one person came up in the first well, place. I think as the chair of the commission, what you did on this was the right way to do it. Yeah. And that's what made me think this is the way we should do it. And it all got disseminated the right yeah. way, and and they can have their discussions on that end if they want. And uh, Jack, I, I will... I will say, like Jim, I, I usually email Jim directly when it's about like the ArcGIS system. I don't know if you want me to change that and go through you for that. Well, I think if it's something to do with hmm. something public works, what do you think, Jim? What's yeah, I'm fine with that. Like the GIS, that's you know <coughs> that's, that's usually a quick yeah yes, no. quick response. It's not hours worth of research. I guess that's where it gets kind of. Yeah. Bog, it bogs us down. And but so, if it's Planning yeah. Commission business and you want to contact our liaison, I think it should go through me first so that I know right. what what it is that you want to know from our liaison and then I could discuss that. Actually, even better yet, yeah. the way my boss and I always do it is that anytime we do anything, we make sure we CC each other so we always know what's going on at all times. So whether they contact him directly, they should copy you so you know that so-and-so's reaching out. Yeah, I think out. one way or the other. And then if for some reason, if you don't want to contact me, just send, send it to Tammy. If you think there's something that you don't want me to, or I've done something or whatever, you want to obviously not include me in that. Now I'll come talk to you and so say, what are you thinking? I, no. I, will, <laughs> I will say that as far as seeing him, you need to be careful about that. It cannot be anything that might come forward to pill. Okay. But because if it's one I'm talking about what would be appropriate or who, would right. be, who I should like, contact. Like this issue that not was any technical thing. The thing either. that was canceled on here tonight, right? Yes. You could not CC him on that because then he would have to right. refuse himself from that. No, no, no I'm just, I'm, what I'm just talking about is like if we do anything, I see what you're saying. All right. Um, but I was primarily thinking about, you know, whatever we have questions this person and this person should know what we're doing or what we're reaching out for information. Especially if it's a project we're working on versus right. a specific, you know, an application where we're getting into a, a, a di we're kind of wearing a different hat. Yeah. Here we're talking about communicating and What's appropriate? we're talking about, yeah. Uh, so like during process. this last apartment thing, I had a lot of discussion with different people, you know, city staff and commissioners, but none of it was specific to the application. It was all about process, yeah. and so that's okay to do that, right. and it wasn't anything to do with the application. So let's think about that, but for now, let's um, try to funnel those things at least through me and Tammy or Tammy. 
Um, the other part is the social media um, policy that the city has, which hopefully we'll get somebody to explain that to us. And I've also talked to Jackie about email. For all the commissions and all the everybody in the city that does anything, I'm going to try to get an email address for everybody, whether you're on the traffic safety or whatever. And it'd be like position three email. And then, you know, when that gets replaced, it's still the same email address because public, right. and we need some more training on, on public records again. Everything is a public record, including that email that you're using. For I use my personal email right now for planning commission business. If we get subpoenaed, then we have to produce. And sometimes it gets real hairy. Yeah, I had asked about that uh, a couple yeah, years ago. Yeah, so did I. I and, remember that. Um, at the time, they said only city council would get it because they were paying five dollars per email address. Well, it doesn't matter because well, the city's going to have, regardless of what the cost is, it's going to have to be done. But the city's got their new email system coming online, which is going to be an in-house email system, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. So, you know, there's it's always a cost, but what's a lawsuit? <laughs> yeah. We're an appointed commission appointed by the city council. Right. So, and we do public hearings. We do more public hearings than anybody. And that's very important that we follow the law as close as we can. So the other part of that is like social media. If you put something on social media about anything to do with land use, your opinions or whatever, you're speaking for the city and we can't do that. We have a PIO for the planning commission or whoever. The city has a couple of PIOs. I think one is a fire department or the chief? We have, uh, I believe, Kirk Stemple in the fire department is our, for the, yeah, for the fire department. And not sure. Maria in Mar the police in department. Maria in the police department. And so any, anything that comes from the city has to come from the PIO, whoever so, that is. So that is not accurate according to the last conversation with the legal team. Okay, tell Very me what's not accurate. So, stuff, so. Um, so we had a discussion with uh, David and Ashley and um, Chad about that. Um, so one of the things that came up was that if we're doing giving out factual information, like there will be a meeting at this time, or here's the PDF to the document, or here's the how you find that information, um, they said we can share that. Right. We can all be involved in that, and there is no public. There is no uh, risk of serial meetings. If there is the, the, the change point, to that the, is the point to the serial meetings was if we're expressing opinion. Okay, the change to that now is that we have a public information officer and we have a city um, policy on social media or releases or anything. So I don't know what that is. Yeah, I mean there, there's going to be limitations there because. The but legal, I think for now, the I would be legal. well. What was legal yesterday may not be today. But they said the freedom of speech does not allow them to block that. But you're better to err on the side of caution in this stuff. Well, let's see what the city's policy is. What yeah. Jackie and everybody well, who's working on that public information side of it is. I know where I work at the county. They just flat told you you can't. Yeah, I, mean, I personally would not be willing to leave the internet. My entire career is online. I mean, I don't really express opinions on any city business, but I do give out information. Like I gave information that I told people that if they're interested in this planning commission vacancy or in the interview process, please read this document. I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't think that would be a, a policy from the city. So if somebody asked me, well, what about the planning commission packets? And I sent them a link to the planning commission packets. I don't think there's anything wrong with well, that. That's what I usually do. It's not city business to say to you know speak, but if you're saying if you have an opinion on any and anything that we're working on, that would be a policy from the city. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't express my opinions. I okay. think everybody's. Uh, I, I think just be careful and be yeah. thoughtful about what you're sending out there, and I think we'll be okay. And then we'll get the policy from the city on as at our, at our next meeting. I don't whenever we can. Mm -hmm. Whenever so they it's can in it's, it's in progress right now. It's in the yeah, the okay. city's working on that. I don't that whole policy isn't done yet, is it? The social media policy yeah. has been approved. It's all done. And That's so right. It was approved. Yeah, it was approved. Council. 
So we'll forward that information on, correct? We, so we yeah, we need to it. know, we need to read that, understand what that is, and then if people have questions, I would like somebody to be able to answer some questions about that too. Yeah, and you bring up a good point. Uh, having all the wonderful experiences as a property owner in Damascus, <laughs> oh yes, we had all kinds of, let's just say, things changing in midstream and a lot of commotion, a lot of finger pointing. And, and the reason I referenced that is that in through the middle of all of that, one thing was really clear, and that is the, the planning commissioners, the counselors were free to share city information, but not to pass judgment, not to comment, not to voice opinions unless it was run through. So if I say, um, here's, here's some thoughts for solar or for energy savings on our new buildings, um, you know, feel free to, to uh, contact a counselor or, or whoever it may be, a project manager. Um, in no way am I violating the tenant and in no way am I um, crossing that line. Because if you ask me when the planning commission meeting is in an email and I don't tell you because I'm afraid to tell you, and this is this is how it got, that, that where people were afraid to, to say, you know, Oh, you've got a beard over there. And so my point is that I think that, that being around a lot of that, we do have to watch ourselves, but at the same time, sharing information is not the same as sharing opinions or making legal statements or, or making any kind of commitment that you've got no business making. We're not here to make commitments as individuals, and we all know that. We're working good together. So There's a big difference between an elected official and an appointed one as well. But we are sworn to the Constitution right. of Oregon, and, and we're the yeah. city council and planning commission are sworn positions. Yeah. And we were going to have somebody explain that, too, that they never <laughs> did. But it, it's a different um, thing. Right. But a, an elected official has a lot more leeway on on expressing opinions mm -hmm. than an appointed one does. So we're at the pleasure of the commission, and we have a specific job to do, and, and our opinions are not part of that, in my estimation. Yeah, well, well said. And you, you say it at the start of the hearings. You know, we're here to deal with the facts and make a decision. Right. You know, whether I like this or not is secondary. and. So I we can have really opinions, but we have to be careful about how we express them. All right. Well, good work. Yep. Any other business? <coughs> and this is our liaison. Could you introduce yourself and, and tell us a little bit about yourself? And <coughs> I'm Michael Milch. Uh, most of you know I was appointed to the council uh, last month. Uh, and uh, I have an interest in, uh, well, what I said with during the during the appointment process for council liaisons was uh, that I was aware that there may be a difference of opinion over just how involved the council liaison uh, gets with the planning commission on some of the matters that come before them. Uh, I know that uh, uh, as my understanding is that, that, that Councilor Sickman who preceded me in my seat and in this role sort of introduced himself at the first meeting and said goodbye, you won't see me again because uh, he, he felt it was very important to keep a, a real arm's length distance. Uh, I'll, I'll try to get some guidance from the city attorney on that and to see, you know, I'm not sure that it's going to be a problem for me to hear the same evidence twice if something were to come from a field. Uh, as long as I'm not involved in the decision making process, it's no different than reading the minutes or hearing your decisions. And, uh, but, but, you know, I'll want, I want the attorney to weigh in on that. Yeah, when you when you talk to David, one of the things that he brought up before is you being in the room, people might look to you to see how you're reacting. So it may not be anything that you're hearing. Yeah, it may not be what you're hearing. It may just be the fact that you're present. Right. When you're jumping up and down, that yeah, sends a... Yeah, <laughs> Surrounding a green 
something that people really want and it would be an appropriate type of housing option to have in the community. So, uh, you know, I'm interested in looking at ways perhaps that we can modify some of the things for the kind of infill development the city is likely to see so that if somebody bought, you know, was able to get two or three single family home uh, sites and want to do an infill tear down and, and if there's something that might be appropriately fit on that site that could either be into, you know, in what's currently coded for that or, um, you know, a change in code that would provide for some of this kind of thing. You know, I'm not pushing it and saying that we need to do it, but but I think, uh, you know, we've been keeping, keep keeping up with some of what other communities <coughs> in So, and I know that uh, on those things where you're making legislative decisions as a group, uh, you know, I can certainly be present for that. There's no question about the role I can play as you work on those kinds of things together. And yeah, we recommend uh, those that, to you. Yeah. We, the recommendations go to city council and legislative. The quasi-judicial is done when we say okay. So the other thing, well, <coughs> you're you talking about uh, complexes versus individual buildings. Yeah. And that's another thing that sort of came up on this last project. You know, we were handed a letter from an attorney for the group that was opposed to the, to the uh, applicant. Uh, and and it pretty much we found it on our desk when we got up there that night. Nobody had time to read it beforehand or really to, to react to it. But this attorney expressed some opinions about, uh, you know, how certain individual buildings like uh, the studio apartment over the top of the garage really constituted a single family home and therefore the square footage requirements were different for that than they were when you have four units in a separate building. And I don't know whether uh, another attorney might disagree with that, and I, I think we were lucky that we were not in the position of having that an hour ahead and having time to read it and then have to decide, well, is this attorney, is he right or is he wrong, you know? Um, but uh, it just occurred to me that that, that whole idea of a, of a complex of individual buildings in a, in a multifamily unit, we, we may need to you know, to bow it up on just how we treat that when we look at square footage requirements and other things, because obviously an attorney who's representing people who have one view may find a way to make an argument that, that it should be looked at one way, sure. and we need to be prepared to, to know whether we should look at it another way if, if that is in fact the case. And, but and that did come up recently um, with a house on Gloucester. Um, uh, the uh, the house is, to us, it looks like a duplex. That's a duplex, but it's not a duplex. <laughs> but the developer is saying it's not because one ha one part of it is above a garage and they're considering that a mother-in-law suite. And so our code allows that, but does not allow duplexes. It actually is two buildings that are attached. Yeah. It's, and so yeah, there is like some areas <laughs> around that concept that our code does talk about, but the developers are currently arguing against, so. Well, I look forward to working with you. You, bet. Uh, you obviously uh, are, are a good team, the way you work together. I hope you get a seventh member who will, who will fit into that team and, and, and work with you and, uh, uh, you know, and that you'll continue the process of playing this very important role. Thank you. Chairman Rollette, I'd like to ask one other thing that could be added to our next agenda. Is something about a cutoff date on submission of information on things that come before us. Yes, last one we had stuff was coming in up to the time we came in here and sat down. Yeah, they were and handing the stuff out right. as we were sitting here, so I don't know what we can or can't do on that. E even a 24-hour minimum would be <laughs> somewhat acceptable. I can follow uh, up with that. I know we're gonna sure. we're going to be working on getting more complete applications, so we're going Correct. to work with Clay on. You know, this the apartment building thing was enough to drive me crazy with the way it came in and changed, you know, by the it minute. It come in right up to so the last minute. For us, we can't add it a week in advance. Why can they? Like, why are they allowed to submit stuff? Well, public, we I think you can uh, submit public records right up to the time of the hearing, can't you? I would have to clarify that, but you do have, you know, when you have members of the audience come up, they can present right. items to you at so that I time. I think we, there's not much choice with that, but when the applicant puts their application in, I think we can refuse or 
refusals if they're not complete. If we don't deem them complete, and that's, I think, this last one, one of the mistakes we made was we allowed that thing to go through the, um, before it was complete. It was very incomplete. Um, one thing I think we forgot, I received an email from Malachi, and I think it pertains to some issues um, about getting together a sheet that qualifies whether something's ready to be presented before. Isn't that what you sent me? Street of Dreams? I don't think I sent that to you. I thought it was you. I'll double check. But I do think we need to get a, a list of qualifying, you know, setting the criteria of we need this and this and this before <coughs> we before it's, you know, appropriate to bring before the Planning Commission. Because there's certain things we want to s that we need to see when an application is actually deemed complete. And there's a big difference, in my opinion, anyway, between a, a citizen coming up in, in testimony and presenting something than somebody submitting something as part of a plan. I part of the packet. Proposed, Pat. Yeah, packet. I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. I think that should be on our agenda next time as well, is that we need to move forward on getting that list and that criteria set. I know Jackie and Tammy are working with Clay. Good. And, you know, we're, we have some expectations as a commission. And, you know, as Clay is one of the staff of the city. And um, Tam or uh, Jackie's the city manager. And I think she's addressing right. any issues that we might have. So, Jim, since a we checklist. have you there, um, <laughs> one of the things we talked about last time, and I don't know if it got passed along to you, but um, even if we, if, even if there is no comments on one, we'd like to make sure to know that you at least saw it. Because right. sometimes when it comes to force, we're not sure if you've seen it yet. Right. Um, so even no comment would be right. okay. Okay. No, I mean, it doesn't better. have to be you personally, obviously. Right, right, right. No, I can get better at that. It's just, yeah, if I don't, I got a lot of stuff going on so it's hopefully it's I'll get better than that. We're, so we're going to yeah. try and push that for all yeah. the staff reports because Clay sometimes comes before us and says that he's received no input from staff. Mm -hmm. That's not very helpful to us if we have to prove it that night. Right. So right. Yeah, this shouldn't have been happening a lot lately. I've been I think been, right. been pretty good about that but make sure I pay better attention to that. <laughs> but yeah if you could pass that along to everybody else mm -hmm. to just like I said even no comment for us at least lets us know you've seen it. Right. Okay. Folks, it's been a long evening. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for all your time. I want to thank Dennis McCarthy. I hate to see you go, my friend. <laughs> I know. But oh, it's understandable. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> now, now you, you understand that some of the new rules for decorum are directed at you. <laughs> because of you. <laughs> That's a compliment, Dennis. <laughs> you need a motion to adjourn the meeting? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn our Planning Commission meeting. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. None opposed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Hammer. Done. I change my vote. <laughs> <laughs>